Hi there folks, it's Tim Golf 5 Tango Mike. Um, maybe you're fairly new to the hobby and you were stumbling into uh, some equipment you've never used before, maybe you're not sure how to use it. Well today what I thought I'd do is show you, if you've never done this before, how to use a manual antenna tuner. Let's have a look. Thanks for dropping by and if you're new to the channel or if you haven't yet subscribed, think about doing so. It'd be brilliant to have you on board. Anyway, let's cut to the chase. I've got myself a, uh, a good old second-hand uh, Kenwood 80, is it a 230? Yes, a 230 tuner, which I've got over here. What I thought I'd do is take literally a few minutes of your time to show you how to use one if you've never used a manual tuner before. Uh, this is typical of a good old fashioned tuner, this one, and uh, I thought I'd show you how to do it. So in case you're wondering how to do this, maybe you're thinking about investing in one, this is how this particular one works, and it's pretty typical of how they all work. So um, let's have a look. So let's uh, take 15 meters as our example. And I'm using 15 because it's uh, the winter, uh, the band is completely shut. Uh, so we're not gonna be interfering with anybody this evening. So I'm gonna choose 21250 as my uh, center frequency because I'm an SSB uh, operator, phone operator on uh, 15 meters. So what do we do? Well, we're using an example here of a fairly basic manual tuner by Kenwood, it's the AT230. And this is what we do to actually tune the antenna, or in this case, make the uh, impedance uh, acceptable for our radio, of course. So let's see what we need to do. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure we've got the right band selected. And as you can see with most uh, tuners, manual tuners anyway, as you can see here, we've got our band selection and we've got we've already got 21 megahertz uh, selected for 15 meters. Then we make sure we've set the antenna switch, if there is one on the uh, tuner, to the correct antenna we're going to match. And in this case, I make sure I've got my a little bit of coax on the ballon going into antenna one. So we've got the right one there. Next thing we then do is to turn the forward or reflective switch to the reflected position. So here we go, forward and reflective. This is going to measure the reflected power. And what we want to do, of course, with this is to make sure that uh, when we finish tuning, that, uh, that needle uh, barely moves, really, uh, or moves as little as possible anyway, in terms of the reflected power. Because the, the less amount of reflected power we have, the better our match and the better our SWR reading. Okay, so the first thing we're going to measure then is indeed that reflected power. Now to do that, I would recommend that you turn the power down in your uh, radio to uh, no more than five watts. Uh, depending on your tuner, this tuner needs at least, I think, four watts to be able to accurately measure. So we've got it down to five watts. And uh, put it on FM or maybe AM, but I, I use FM to give you a steady, a steady carrier. So basically you don't have to uh, whistle into the mic or anything to give you more accurate reading. And obviously choose a portion of the band that you, to the best of your knowledge and the best of your belief is a quiet portion. As I said, 50 meters is absolutely dead at this time of the evening in the winter time. And I've spent time checking that beforehand. So let's see, I'm going to press transmit then and let's see what the, esti what the uh, reflective power is looking like. So uh, here we go. So uh, that's on 20 watts and that's not great on the 20 watt scale. Uh, what have we got there? We've got a fair bit of reflective power coming back. You can see we're up to about a quarter of our power coming back, something like that. So we need to sort that out, don't we? And in fact, the SWR reading on the on the Sen 300, just checking, is uh, way, way, way up. So uh, we need to sort that out. Let's just de depress that again. So what do we need to do? Well, the first thing we have to do, therefore, having checked, we have a, a quite a mismatch in our hands, is to use these two uh, dials here. Uh, this one, the R tune, in this case, this tunes the uh, resistance, and the X tune tunes the reactance. And what we need to do now is to try and get a better, a, as good a match as possible. Now you could have, you can rely on the SWR reading here. But I'm looking at reflected power. So you, reflected power is, uh, you know, is a very good way of checking how good your your match is anyway. But of course, uh, modern rigs quite often have an SWR meter included. But you can also, if you wish, uh, use maybe an external SWR meter in line as well. It's up to you what you want to do. Anyway, let's uh, press transmit again. So as you can see, we've got a fair bit of reflected power. So what do we need to do? 
Well, first thing we need to do then is to start tuning, uh, moving these dials. So first of all, let's try this one. So we're just going to move this up until we see some, perhaps some sort of dip. Okay, nothing doing. Let's try reactants, and let's try this one again. Sometimes you've got to be a bit patient. Ah, now we see, oh, that's good. Now we see a dip. And let's see how far down we can do that. Uh, I think that's about where we are. And in fact, looking at the SWR meeting on the rig, meter on the rig, it's now not showing any SWR at all. So that's a good start. Now, I've just uh, de-keyed the, uh, the, uh, the transceiver there, so we're not transmitting anymore. Next thing we can do uh, with this then is to now turn the power up. Now I can go up to 400 watts because of my license. I don't run more than 100 watts. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just select maybe 30 watts. Again, checking the frequency is clear, of course. And I'm going to transmit again. Uh, again, and yes, looking not looking too bad. Slightly more reflected power, but again, I've got uh, basically a zero SWR reading, very low SWR reading on the Sentinel 300. So I'm just going to introduce a bit more power now and see where we go with this. And that's looking pretty good. 100 watts out on FM. And I see very little SWR. I'm just going to try and just uh, notch this back a bit. If we put this under 200 watts. You can see there's very little, and apologies for the fan, by the way, with the, uh, <laughs> with the PSU kicking in. Let's try and fine-tune this and bring this back down even further if we can. I'm not sure we can get any better, actually. Yeah, just checking the SWR reading on, on the radio again, just snuck up back up. No, I think that's about as good as it's going to get. So there you go. And that's it. So, last thing we can do is check the SWR on the, uh, on, on the tuner. Now, some tuners will have this facility, some won't. Again, you can have an external SWR meter just above if you want to, so you can check this. You can have that in line too. So uh, what I'm going to do is check the SWR, and uh, of course I think we all know how to do that, but let's have a little bit look, look at how we do do that. So we click now from uh, click to power down to SWR. I'm just going to calibrate, so I'm just going to click that, uh, put that up again, and just calibrate that. And then down to SWR. As you can see, a very acceptable list of we are reading. I've got nothing on the Icon Center 300, and I've got about 1 1.3 to 1 there. Uh, either way, uh, with a very little reflected power being uh, being brought back, I think that's pretty much successfully tuned the antenna. Or, oh, well, should I say, matched, <laughs> let's get this right, matched the antenna and the radio together uh, for this particular band. Thanks for watching guys, 73, stay safe and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from G5TM. All the best now, bye bye.